we're live uh, on twitch.tv slash ocatrina, which I'm going to go check right now as we begin in the cantina, an all new Star Wars podcast that I made up today because I wanted to talk about Asajj Ventress. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thank you for tuning in. Um, uh, we're going to do some friendly banter as folks filter in and I put out the uh, official promo tweet which is going out right now. Uzzah. Hello, my friends. Uh, let's go ahead and just have a round of introductions. Um, Candice, would you like to start? I am Candice, and I am just overjoyed and so happy that my girl's alive, and she's, like, going to, you know, kick some butt. Mm -hmm. so that's where I am right now. I've been, like, hyped since lunch, my lunch break, and I saw the trailer, and I'm just like, I'm out of 12. been out of 12 all day. Yeah, yeah. Brit? Hello. I'm Brit. Um, honestly, I'm just along for the ride. Asajj was always <laughs> my favorite, like, Clone Wars character. And admittedly, I'm not, like, a huge Clone Wars fan. So, like, I'm very excited that she's, like, back and being a baller. So, yay! Yes. I'm so happy. I Today, whew, I was like, okay. So I was going to the doctor today, did not anticipate my heart rate being the heart rate, rate it would be all day. And like, I wasn't like jazzed about, you know, anything about today. I had to go to the doctor, get work done, apply to jobs. Um, and then like, out of nowhere, Arzu texts me like, as I'm getting ready to go to the freaking doctor. And she's like, have you watched the Bad Batch trailer? So credit to Arzu for being the person who texted me first about, about it. Um, and I was like, no. And so it, it like deep in my soul, I was like, this is going to be, it. this, this is it. Ventress is back. No one, she wouldn't text me like this. Like if this weren't it, but like, I just, I held on to it and I waited. And then like when it happened, the scream I scrumped was like, I've never heard myself make that sound before. Um, like the, the fangirl squeal. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Like I just, oh, and I burst into tears. And so it's been a monumental day and, uh, and yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited to be here talking with you two about it. Cause you were some of my very best pals and that makes me very happy. So, yes. So in our group chats, um, everyone's like, has anyone checked on Katrina? And I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, wait, the bad batch trailer's out. And then I put like two and two together. But I'm just like, maybe they just like mentioned her or something, or like Quinlan Boss is there and he's like, I, I miss her or something like stupid like that. But mm -hmm. I'm like waiting, I'm like waiting, waiting, and then I'm like, hey. oh my god, yeah. Brad's like, little how is Katrina message. I was like, oh, there's only one yeah. logical conclusion to this. <laughs> I'm so glad that I have a brand. Yeah. <laughs> a good I just, brand. Yeah. Oh my god! Like it was, it was just something I I never expected to actually happen. You know, like you put your fan theories out there in the world, and you're like, that'd be nice. But like <laughs> the fact that like she's back and like uh, alive. Oh my god, they brought a woman alive. back from the dead in Star Wars. From Clone Wars, miracle. especially Katrina. I, from Clone Wars, I need Lucasfilm on the phone right now. I need to talk about Natalie Portman. I need mm -hmm. to know when they're calling her. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Katrina exactly. never had like this, like kind of like side discussion. To be like, Clone Wars kills a lot of women, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Like a lot of the female characters just die in that. And yeah. like, you brought one back, so that's like, going to be like a negative one. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I finally, you know, like I feel like, um, uh, the playing field is even, um, mall. And I'm going to make this point now so that I don't have to be negative for the rest of the show, but like people going like her coming back is impossible. It breaks the lore, blah, 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 blah. First off for the impossible argument, mall survived on garbage and rage for 10 years after getting sliced in two pieces, Palpatine cloned himself, and did a bunch of other nasty things. And like the fact that a force witch who was, you know, buried in a magical lake on her magical planet being a magical force witch, like can't just come back from the dead from something that was called the water of life. That's, I mean, it's that's in the title. Yeah. Like if anyone name. were to come back from the dead, and I've been saying this for years, 
since like 2015 when it happened. If anyone in Star Wars were to come back in the from the dead and it would make sense, it would be Asajj Ventress. And then the whole argument that like, oh, it destroys the lore, it destroys her arc, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think that um, her, dying her arc. her arc, yeah. I don't think dying her arc for of dying. Did anybody man. read that book that destroyed her arc? Well, that's the thing is that like, first off, I don't think dying for a guy that you dated for like two months was is the should be the culmination of an arc, and I don't think that fridging a woman should ever be the end to her redemption arc. Like I or be the reason he goes back to the light side. Exactly. So again, he was she was fridged to get Krillin Boss back on the right path. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like it was part of her story. Yes. Yeah. That was my I wanted a Quinlan to die. I didn't want a solid to die. Let's be real. Don't hate so the player. Hate the game. <laughs> it's the whole ridiculous death trope that is so played out and it feels very lazy. Mm -hmm. uh, not just in general, it feels lazy. Like, okay, this person did terrible things. The only way they can redeem themselves is through death. Because it would be a lot of hard work to work on redeeming yourself. And either people don't Does want to write really that do or it's too that messy. Awful, though? Like, really? Really? Mm -hmm. um, just like, I'm just like flashing back that... to like every clone she killed and, you know, oh. every like... Oh. She took, she tried to take out Boring. Anakin's eye. She took Wolf's eye out. Mm -hmm. you know? Yep. She, yeah, she has an affinity for eyeballs. Okay. Me, the one who has Anakin Skywalker tattooed on her body, says anything that was inflicted on this man, he deserved it. It's fine. He's fine. He <laughs> yeah. Literally yeah. Fine. It's, like, it's fine. Okay. Here's the deal. Uh, like, Anakin goes out. He like is trying to really woo Padme um, and really like say, like like solidify their new marriage. He goes out to battle. He comes back with a really hot scar. What is a, what has Ventress yeah. done? For him? She's done him a favor. It's a favor. Absolutely, romance hero achieved. We thank you, Ventress. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. I'm and sure not to blame <laughs> anyone's traumatic childhood on what they do as a grown up. But if anybody could blame their traumatic childhood, it would be Ventress. It would be. Like, she's yeah. never had anyone, like, well, anytime that she's had anyone take, like, a, actually care about her, they get taken away. Mm hmm. Yeah. I think, and honestly, like, really, oh, no, go on, please. Would you, would you say, like, really only Quinlan Voss for like two months and her master? really cared about her because even like Mother Taplin when she comes back to Dathomir, you feel like Mother Taplin's just like really using her. Yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. Mother Talzin, when Ventress came back, it was a pawn being put back in play on her side. Because that's ultimately what she was doing was playing space chess with like Palpatine and Dooku. And Palpatine obviously was or orchestrating the whole thing, but like three Ventress coming back gave her a valuable tool to use. So that's definitely she did it to Maul too, you know. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's what Talzin was, uh, and yeah, I mean, I would say like you know I, we discussed this on like an upcoming episode of of what's club, but like very few people like Quinlan and her master and and even Obi Wan, you know, they they believed in her her ability to not only like change for the better, but like teach them a couple things. So I I think that like her her arc coming back and us being able to see her deal with another loss ultimately like if she really you know i assume she loved quinlan vaz by the way that book went um so coming back and discovering that he's dead obi-wan's dead everyone that she knew is like a good portion of them are either dead or like they're you know missing um this counts outside of the jedi like maybe she finds out what eventually happened to like Boba Fett and all the bounty hunters that she teamed up with. Maybe she discovers other night sisters, but this opportunity to come back and continue to develop her story into something that's very unique in star Wars, I think is a really smart one to take. Oh, I was going to say, and just the fact that she is so complex and I love the stories after she leaves, du well, Dooku's like, bye. He mm -hmm. stops and no more. And yep. even that shows that Dooku, like, 
loved her in his own really weird way that he wasn't willing to kill her mm. but like but still like get rid of her but like i love the episodes where she's just a freelancer yeah she's just like trying to find her spot in this galaxy and you realize at this point this is the first time she's truly been free mm -hmm. and she really hasn't had a chance in life and that's like so tragic yeah, I think something really unique in all of these stories that like kind of reminds me of like Catwoman in a way um, is that in all three of the stories that really that people know about, actually four, but like in the three main ones, which are uh, the Ark in Ahsoka, the Wrong Jedi Ark, um, the uh, Ventress comic from the Republic comic series by Jody Hauser, and the episode Bounty. Um, in all three of these, she helps young women whose lives are about to be robbed and taken away from them. And, and she is, she relates to them so deeply in that way that like, you know, everything about her morals starts to change. And that's what really sets off her redemption. Like, of course, like the, the revenge is an incredible episode and I love it. And I love my Obi Ventress, but Ventress being able to see herself in these young women and say like, no, I don't want to watch this happened to them. If I can step in, I'm going to step in and help them, you know? Um, and that starting with Ahsoka, I thought was just perfect and poetic. So. Yeah. And honestly, if you think of any of the other dark side users that we've seen in Clo at least like Clone Wars era, mm -hmm. they would have in a heartbeat um, given that child bride yep. for the money, you know, they would not have even thought about it. Yeah. That's a but great she... episode for both. Oh, go on. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Great episode. I love that for Boba Fett. Yes. Little angry Boba Fett. Yeah. Trying I mean, to be the boss. You see, like, both of them. I That episode, I think, is foundational, not just for Ventress's eventual arc, but for who Boba becomes in the book of Boba Fett. Like, the person we see in the book of Boba Fett was the person that was sparked when Boba opened that crate, and he was like, holy crap, there's a, a child in here. And immediately his, his tone changed. Like, I'm going to get you out of here. I'm here to help. And then Ventress comes in and beats him up. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like it does. Yeah. I just, I love, the, I love the whole wrong Jedi arc. It makes me sad every time to watch it. Mm -hmm. But it's so good. And just the scenes with her and Ahsoka and teaming up. And it's just like, it makes so much sense. And it's just so perfect. Mm -hmm. Like you've talked and about how Anakin is like a Anakin and Asajj are very similar, mm -hmm. but just like also like the fact that she's connected also to his Padawan, just yeah. keeps adding the layers to it. That I think is what makes his encounter with her like so important to like, not just her development, but his, because for the, I, I would assume for the entire time that Anakin and Asajj have been fighting each other, um, Neither of them really knew deep details or maybe Asajj did because it was her job to learn everything about her um, opponents. But like, I don't think Anakin knew much about Asajj or why she was the way she was, um, despite Obi-Wan like having that empathy for her. Like and for her to say, like, it was your Jedi Order that abandoned me, just like they abandoned Ahsoka. Um, you could tell that that like stopped Anakin in his tracks um, and changed Unfortunately, maybe didn't help his view of the Republic Jedi, but it was something that was like very different for him to have like that point of view into her life. Well, so she's like, my master abandoned me. And just like you're abandoning Ahsoka, even though clearly he's not. But I think it just reinforces his like belief in Ahsoka. And I was just rewatching the finale of the Ahsoka series. And she says straight up, like, my master never gave up on me. Mm -hmm. And she tells Sabine, I'm not going to give up on you either. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like it just like keeps going. I love that. It's so amazing how like these characters, their stories ripple out. And like I have felt like such a conspiracy theorist for like years and years and years because I'm like, you know, Ahsoka does like a certain move in like Clone Wars season seven and it was in the trailer. And I'm like, she learned that from Ventress. Like that's a Ventress move. And it, 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 even in like the animation in those little moments, like you can tell how deeply these characters are like affected by each other. So I'm, I'm so excited to have her back. Do you, do you think the mention of Ventress in the Ahsoka series was a hint to this? 
Mm, I hope so. Like, I just, I feel like this has been something, and like, this is not a brag. I do have friends at like Lucasfilm who I know have had to be like, I can't tell Katrina anything. Like, I, I have to hold this back. <laughs> um, and like, I just, I think that this mention of her was one of those things. The release of her redemption lightsaber at Galaxy's Edge was a huge, like, I was like, why would they, this is from a book, like, that, like, uh, you know, the, a good portion of the fan base has read, which are great people, but, but, uh, you know, a huge chunk of the fan base doesn't read these books. And like, why would they release something like this? You know, it's an easy remake, remake of them all half saber, but like, why would they release it specifically as Ventress, specifically as like, it was called like the, the reforged lightsaber or something like that. Um, and it was like supposed to reflect her redemption and it came in a white box with a yellow button and I've seen little Ventress releases throughout like the past couple of years like the the New York Comic Con bag the there have been a bunch of figurines she's been included in games and I at first it was like oh this is nice and then second it was like gee there's like a growing amount of Asajj Ventress merch coming out <laughs> yeah I got this Star Wars the villains game I think it was last birthday from my friend and who is mm -hmm. one of the playable characters Ventress Ventress, exactly. Yep. She, they, her universe dress, which of course, the second I saw it, I was like, Christian, have you seen this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm from here, I'm so excited to see what's going to come up because, like, like, I'm just thinking about, you know, Ventress in a Bad Batch Lego set and, and more Ventress, like, product. Like, Arzu brought up in our group chat um, earlier that, like, the, the cute little bag she's got on her back, like lounge fly should get on that. And I agree, <laughs> I would buy it. Um, but I'm just like, I'm, oh man, I'm so excited for like this, this new like era of Ventress. I'm so happy. So I, I have feel a question. like you gotta get like a Funko Pop now though. Finally, right? I've been saying for years, Funko. she just has the perfect head for a Funko Pop. So I hope that like she they do a bad back like her one and also head yeah, with the like bangs. Little, yeah. She needs the one with the bangs and everything. Yeah. Oh, yes. Be so cute. Oh what do you guys think that Ventress's like thoughts are of this new empire? Like, is she like, okay, I get this. Like, this is what like Dooku got used. We all got used kind of thing. Or is she like vehemently against it or is she just like, do you think she's at survival mode mm -hmm. at this moment? Yeah, I would, I would definitely say that uh, survival for survival mode is probably one of the answers. Um, and I would also say that like, I, I, as you were asking that, I was reminded of the, the legends comic called obsession. And at the end of obsession, mm -hmm. She fakes her death um, and <laughs> and Obi-Wan sets her on like a Republic, like grave ship or whatever to go have a Jedi burial. Um, and she fakes her death. She takes over the ship and she asks the pilots to fly her as far away as possible, away from the Jedi, away from the Sith and away from the war, the war. And so like, I feel like she's been laying low and taking care of herself and whoever happens to have like, floated into her stratosphere. So I could see her being like, I, I don't think we're going to get the so much the Ventress that we did in the Clone Wars, who was like, I don't want to be around anybody. Um, but I do think we're going to get a Ventress who is like, I have a tight group of people, or like, these are the people, like the five people I will protect in this world, um, or something like that. Like, I feel like this encounter that we're seeing on screen is going to be something that starts as a fight and ends as an alliance. Do you think they're going to be like, we got to save our little sister? And she's like, little sister? Small child. She's like, there's a, a child that's in child. danger? Let me a child that, that small girl yeah. child. <laughs> a girl child in prison somewhere? That's like <laughs> the one thing you could tell me. Yeah. It's going to change everything. That's that's it. That's really, that's all they had. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be like some kind of mutual interest. Like, I think that's where the, where Ventress is involvement will come in like and this is just a theory or whatever but like i think the empire might have something ventress wants or have captured someone ventress is like protecting or working with or something like that like i just don't think she's going to come in as part of the empire in any way or any kind of oh no definitely not yeah so after everything with dooku and 
Oh, heck no. Palpatine. Yeah. Well, she, she probably, everyone's like, by the time the Empire starts, they're like, oh. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that guy. guy. That guy. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. All right. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I definitely think like she will not like be interested in, in having a part in the Empire at all. I think she's just interested in like surviving, which has kind of always been her, her thing. So like now, See, the first part of her, I'm talking a lot. I'm so sorry. But the first part of her Vendemption arc, as I like to call it, <laughs> um, was about learning selfless. So it's this, now that she's learned that selflessness, now that she is not someone who is only out for herself, uh, I would like this next part of her, 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 you know, life to be about learning to get out of survival mode and finding and defining the life that she wants because she is a really unique force user in that she has been on the dark side. She has been on the light side. She's a freaking space witch. So the way she uses and interacts with the force is another huge element of her story that like we just haven't gotten that perspective on. So I think there's a lot of story left to tell in Ventress, but I'm biased. So I'd love to hear what you, you two think. I'm wondering if there's going to be inquisitors after her. Since she is a poor mm -hmm. user and we're at the beginning of the empire. Mm -hmm. If that's something she like, I gotta be always on the run, kind of like Ahsoka is. Mm -hmm. You can't stay at the same place at the same time. And the fact that Wolf's coming back this season two is just what I keep thinking. Brett, I don't know if you this is like, it wasn't even in the series. It's like mm -hmm. a little like, by the way, like little note, like the reason Wolf is missing an eye is because of Ventress. Mm -hmm. So Oh he does not God. like her, which I mean, and then like when she helps Ahsoka escape from the clones, it's his team that they all, they just kick their butts without like killing he them. He slams his head into a beam. <laughs> <laughs> and no, you know he, what? Just, I ship them. <laughs> like, it's like, you should kiss the beam and then kiss me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. I absolutely like not to get super off topic. We talked about it. We're going to talk about it on an upcoming episode of What's Club. But like, I absolutely ship Ventress and Wolf. Like, it's Wolf. Okay, here's my order of men that I ship, <laughs> ship Ventress with because there's only three of them. It's Obi Wan, Wolf, and then Voss. Like, those are those are the three that I'm like, yeah, all right. And then you know nobody else. But but Wolf is definitely one of those where like I could see them being an old couple that are all curmudgeonly and stuff together and they just like fight the empire in secret and stuff. It's great. I really liked her, like her little bounty hunter friend. Oh. The girl, I forget her name. Oh, uh, oh my God. Uh, hold on, let me see. But you know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Because oh there's a feeling they were like Lots Razi. Yeah. They were at yeah. a bar together and like she's like concerned about like she looks like you're like are you okay kind of thing i was like oh she's asking yeah. how she is that's like hmm. that's that was a date by the way like they were hanging out in real close like you know talking in the cantina sharing drinks like that was mm -hmm. so totally a date and then that yeah. that moment like she puts her hand on ventress's hand like <laughs> that's that's like that's basically a kiss in star wars so it's a move it's a move yeah it's like third third base in Star Wars, really. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Fourth base Just, is admitting you love someone, and fifth base is dying. Dying, <laughs> yes. Definitely. <laughs> I'm kind of interested to see if she might, like, cross paths with, like, Crimson Dawn and Kira and Maul and stuff. Oh, I think that would be... Oh, my God. Wouldn't it be great if, like... The way that like da uh, Darth Maul like lost his hold in Christmas Dawn is because of Ventress. Like that would be amazing. Oh my god! I okay. A Ventress and Kira team up would be so amazing, and it's something that I've thought about since that one celebration artwork came out with like all the women of like Star Wars featured in it, and like Ventress and Kira are like sitting on the same couch, and I'm like, oh, they would be besties. Like Ventress would be like Kira's like evil mentor, <laughs> like not evil, <laughs> but you know. Like maybe a little evil. Bronze mentor, a petty mentor, just being yes. petty. Let's be mm -hmm. petty. I love that uh, idea. Forgive me because I haven't watched the Bad Batch, but like, how far, like, where in the timeline does Bad Batch happen again? Ooh. Directly, it happens. It starts right 
in the like end of Revenge of the Sith, mm-hmm. and like the first episodes are like Revenge of the Sith epilogue. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then it's the like the very first days. So right now we're about season two is about two years, I would say, mm-hmm. because Omega okay. has grown a bit, and it seems like it might be like even three years. So we're getting closer to Obi? the other. Or We're solo? not quite at Obi Wan. Yeah, maybe Solo. Yeah, I think I okay. would say we're a couple years off of Solo right now because the Empire is like, so, yeah. Solo and Obi Wan yeah. both um, happened ten years after Revenge of the Sith because mm-hmm. Leia's yeah. ten at that time. Oh, now, so okay, yeah. Like, so we're maybe so, a lot less closer, yeah. And then okay, and then Rebel starts fifteen years after Revenge, right. Five years before A New Hope. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so that's what it is. Does Quinlan die during Order 66 or is he still alive? Because I thought that there was an allusion to him in Obi-Wan. Yes. Like he's alive. part of the rebel. Okay. The path. So he's it, part of the path. Is it like- we don't know if he's part of the rebellion. Mm-hmm. It'd be interesting okay, so if he like, had a little Jedi friend. Like have this like know. one Jedi friend. And then it would be cool just, because like Oh, go on, Bert. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm just wondering if, like, me being a little bit of a romance junkie, are they going to, like, cross paths again? Or, like, what's going to happen? What, like, what state of mind is she going to be in after coming out of this magic lake? Mm-hmm. And, like, re, like, being alive again? Is she even going to, like, remember herself? Or, like, how how is it going to work? I yeah. hope she's, like... Ooh. Did I just die for a dude I met like two months ago? <laughs> <laughs> like, mm-hmm. okay. I think she should be thinking in her head: Was the hookup worth it? Exactly. Like, was it worth it? I mean, I like Ventress and, and Vaz, and I um, I like Ventress and Vaz and Obi Wan all together. But like, I actually that that note you went you said about like the the path. Like, I think it would be so interesting for Ventress to become part of that because that is not Jedi or Sith affiliated. And she's like one of those rare yeah. people who like her force powers are just not aligned to like one or the other side. Um, so I think that would be really neat to have her part of that. I've seen comics where like she helps the rebellion, but doesn't necessarily like join it or anything. So like there's that, like, but I don't, I don't know. into it. Yeah, I think if anything, she might be like a helper of Fulcrum. Like that's as involved as she might get. She might do some yeah. spying. But I need that more I Ahsoka mean. and Asajj. Like oh I need God. those two together. I just want them having conversations. Look. I want them like, you know, fighting together. Like and they're just like a power team. And I'm like, okay, so if she is alive in Bad Batch. Maybe she's alive in Ahsoka season two time. Uh-huh. Because Death the Mirror. Death the Mirror is such a big part of Ahsoka. And what is Thrawn and I feel those like witches she has going to, to show up, to be honest? Yeah. I, feel I like think she why has else to would Anakin up. mention her? Mm-hmm. Why else would she be mentioned in the hologram? It's such a throwaway line. Like, yeah. give it to me. I I don't know if I'll survive if uh, Ventress and Ahsoka reunite in live action as old ladies. Like, I think my heart might like blow up into fifty million pieces. Like, I'll just put you in the lake, your, Katrina. Who's your Thank fan? You. Yeah, just put me in the lake after that happens. Put me in a lake. Put me in a lake. <laughs> Sorry, Bert. What did you say? I said, who is your fan cast for Asajj, Though, if we get to see her in live Ooh. action. Um, okay, so I need to look up this woman's name because for the longest time I thought she would be perfect. Um, let's look up. I've completely forgotten her name. There we go. <laughs> the woman who plays Okoye uh, in Marvel, Denai Guerrera, I think would be a fabulous venture. Oh, yes. She's got the cheekbones. Like, she's just... She's amazing, and I like I loved her. And then I had another person that I really loved, um, who was in Blythe Manor. Um, uh, where is she? Uh, Dania Miller. There we go. Um, another really strong, like, like 
perfect cheekboned woman um, who yeah. like has the height, the the jaw definition. I just and she's an, an amazing, amazing actor. So I think those would be like my my top two. What about y'all? If she wasn't already um, going to be in the Alkalite, there is an actress who I photographed um, on the stage. I'd have to look up her name. I believe it was the woman who had a baby with <sighs> Joshua Jackson. Is it Lashana Lynch? No, I don't think it was Lashana Lynch. It was Jody. I can't remember her Jody name. something. Yes, it's Jody. Jody something. Um, if if she wasn't already going to be in the Alkalite, I would have. A thousand percent said her because she is just absolutely jaw dropping stunning and i just think mm -hmm. that she would be incredible mm -hmm. but um i'm trying to think of like who else i might see as ventress because she's such a like distinct character that it's it's hard to really imagine her outside of animation sometimes yeah yeah, I, I think there's just like a very, and of course, like this book has changed from animation to to live action before, and, and people's head shapes and stuff have been um, redefined. But I definitely think that like you would need to cast pretty closely in looks to Ventress, so that's definitely like on my list. I saw it earlier this week for like Tati Gabrielle, who was Prudence in Sabrina. Um, and she's been on a couple other other shows as well. Oh yeah, for, yeah. She might and be I too think, young, but the yeah. thing is, she would be how a great do young age adventure. though. Mm -hmm. How yeah. do Dathomir's like age? We don't. Well, Miriam's like. I, I will say that like that's the same voice actress who played Ventress in the Clone Wars, and you can. I just feel there's like a little bit of an older tone to her voice right now um, that she gave her, uh, even though Ventress would really. In the Clone Wars, Ventress would only have aged like five years, um, depending on how that lake works. Um, but I don't know. They're, you know, thousands, several hundred years old, I would assume. Um, and I don't think we've ever really seen. We've kind of seen an old Dathomirian who is, um, she's the mother of, uh, oh, goodness, Death Stick from the Crimson Dawn comics. Um, and she's she's a little older like she i'd say she looks 40 or 50 but like i don't know how dathomirians age so i don't know it's a good question you don't know what magical properties are in that lake yep lots of lots of magical properties that we need to bottle up and sell i'm just <laughs> thinking her and omega would be bfs yes oh honestly Especially since there's this allude, it's been alluded to throughout, like especially in season two, that Omega might be force sensitive, mm -hmm. and you know she might need like a not, oh, need no. an auntie or something to like help her with a force sensitivity. Yes. You know? Oh my God, Ventress joins the gang as um, <laughs> as Omega's like like, <laughs> like tutor or something. Yeah. Like her, like godmother, like a auntie Asajj, you know, just like the force governess of Omega. Yeah, <laughs> trying to undo oh all God, the bad habits that. the brothers have like given her. <laughs> just like no. <laughs> oh my no. God, I love I love that idea so much. That just brought me so much joy. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so cute. I love that. Oh my gosh, I'm just I'm so excited for this possibility. Like it just doesn't. That like I've so many times today I've just been like, is this day real? Am I am I dreaming it? Like, let me pinch myself and make sure that like this wild thing that I've been like, it makes sense as actually like happening. So I'm just I'm so happy. Like, <laughs> um, Britt, literally, I last definitely. Week, oh. oh, literally last week, Katrina and I were recording the side cast to what Glup, which is Glup Shippo, which is about <laughs> rare pairings. Mm -hmm. And then Katrina was talking. She chose Obi Ventress. And literally, we were talking about a magic lake and how mm -hmm. she could just, you know, she's alive, you know, literally days before this. Mm -hmm. And absolutely. I'm just I've, I've never accepted the ending of Dark Disciple. I was like, are you kidding me? Can we just have one, 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 one romance in Star Wars that doesn't end in death and tragedy? I mean, I would prefer if it was Anakin and Padme, but that's never going to happen. But mm -hmm. can we have like, one woman not die that isn't Ahsoka? Like that would be great. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm glad that we finally, finally have like the, like I said, it's because this story was a redemption story that it sucked so much to see that that death. But like, I held on to the hope, like even back then, um, that like, you know what, Magic Lake, Magic Lake, she's gonna come back like, as soon as they need her. She's gonna come back. So yeah. yeah. Years ago, before yeah. I met Katrina, when I read the book, I was like, she's gone, and I was really sad about it. But then I met Katrina, and Katrina's like, Magic Lake. Magic. <laughs> and I was like, she's alive. She's alive. Yes. <laughs> I I remember like I do I did really enjoy reading the book, but I was just like, really? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah, I was Why? I loved it to that point. Yeah. And I wonder, like, I just think it opens up so much possibility for, like, you know, either a reunion with Vaz or, like, if he's gone, a reunion with Obi-Wan and Ahsoka and these people who, like, she was just, their relationships were just changing, you know? Like, she mm -hmm. was finally, mm -hmm. so, like, she and Ahsoka finally shifted from trying to kill each other to, like, really deeply understanding each other. And, like, obviously, like, she and Obi-Wan, that door was like i would say it was open um, <laughs> um I mean, Obi -Wan's door is always open Obi -Wan's door is open. always open so it's not like a reunion would go bad for her both ways okay mm -hmm. I, and i think it would be so great to see like obi-wan like especially see her come back like he has lost so many people in his life and to just have that knowledge that like Ventress is alive and she's out there. Like, even if she were just like a friend because he has commitment issues, you know, like, I just think that would be so nice to at least see that Obi-Wan is happy in some way. <laughs> like, yeah. I just, I want like our live action Asajj and our live action Ahsoka in Ahsoka season two to mm -hmm. be like chatting with our force ghost Anakin and Obi-Wan and be like, ha, ha. We're alive and look at you two leaders. <laughs> that's the thing. Wouldn't it be like fantastic? These two women both mm -hmm. abandoned by their community. Mm -hmm. Both ostracized and both like left for dead practically. Mm -hmm. Are the ones left standing. The ones that have a family like hopefully like a will find people their family but mm -hmm. because, like Sabine and Ezra and the Rebels crew. So, you know, they have people. That would be great. And then they're like, these women just still standing strong. I want that. Mm -hmm. I need that. Start I love that so much. <laughs> like, I just, I, I love seeing those. We just, we don't have a very long lasting female friendship in Star Wars as well. That's something that like we've been very deprived of. And I would really love to see like their their stories kind of like cross paths again and uh it would just it would make me so happy you know you were just like oh yeah women friendship and it was like yeah like ahsoka and Barris. and i'm like wait uh, no. uh, well, uh, uh, the friendship they have is <laughs> very different then, it's very there was ahsoka yeah. and padme but that didn't last more than like two years yeah um, I the closest mean, thing we have, have is Hera and Sabine, really. And that's it. That's all I can really think of. If it was ever brought to another medium, there's also like Sabe and Padme and like the Handmaid. That is true. They were stuff. like long friends. We don't talk but... about that. It's true. You're very right. <sighs> oh, every time I see you, Britt, I think about the missed opportunity of Ventress and Padme like meeting and hanging out. Like I have this AU in my head, right? Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and say it because this is my show and I can do whatever I want. Um, I have an AU in my head where like in her bounty hunter days, Ventress is like looking for a job and like the Jedi, you know, Vanagon is off in a battle somewhere and her usual guard is gone and she needs to go on a secret mission so she can't bring anybody from Naboo. And so she's got to hire out a bounty hunter to be her bodyguard and backup. And who would that bounty hunter be but Asajj Ventress? And I just... I would love that. I would die. I would love that so much. I, like, uh, I just, uh, ever since, like, um, I can't, I can never say his last name very well, but, like, Tartakovsky's, like, the, mm -hmm. the Gendy's 
Clone Wars came out. Like, I've just, like, loved her and I've been obsessed with her image. And I just, I want so much more of her. And I just, I want, like, uh, anything with Padme and other characters, other female characters. I would, I would love that. It would be mm-hmm. great. I just, I want, I, just, I want Padme back. Me but- too. I'm so excited about a new generation of Star Wars fans maybe being introduced of interest now because yes. some yeah. kids are just like they watch the new Star Wars and maybe haven't gotten into Clone Wars yet. And yeah, it's just like she came out when we were like still in school, Katrina. Like mm-hmm. it's been the 20 original years. 20 yeah, years. So, it's- so that's God. that's amazing. I'm just so I'm yeah, like to your point, I'm so happy that like now we get this new generation of Ventures fans. Because, like, I'm, at least from my perspective, like, we've only just now really seen, like, the new, new fans, like, our sequel era fans mm-hmm. start co- going back to the Clone Wars because, like, oh, you know, the Bad Batch is cool and I love tech and I've latched onto this character. And I think that, like, going back, uh, it's going to be a really fun and special and exciting thing for them. And I just... Well, I welcome all the new Ventress stands. Welcome. I'm so happy that our numbers are increasing from like 50 to infinity now. So welcome all new Ventress stands. Uh, if you need recommendations for great episodes, come my way. Because honestly, like she's just such an intriguing character from her very first appearance mm-hmm. in that animated series, even though it's th- those shorts are so short. Mm-hmm. Like she, she's like this. Bad. The micro series like, is like it holds such a special place in my heart. I love it so mm-hmm. much. I love it. Really got- oh, yeah, go on. Oh, yeah. Oh, it just got me really hyped for revenge. I was like, yeah, give me more Star Wars. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Like, I I going back to like the micro series, like the reason that she caught my eye wasn't just that, like, oh, she's a cool baddie. It was like, oh, she's a cool baddie, and she's matching Anakin move for move. Like that that flight sequence where she outruns him in like a dingy little f- like like fanship like that's amazing it's incredible and like i think it's something that doesn't get highlighted enough in the 3D series is that like skill wise at least in that era um like before like attack of the clones and stuff when anakin and ventress first met, first met they were at an, a mostly equal level until she pushed him to the dark side and then he like went super saiyan so that's you know like it's it's i think it's amazing to like think of ventress that way and think of her as such an impactful character for not just herself or for dooku dooku but like she played a huge role in anakin's arc and a huge role in obi-wan's and a massive role in ahsoka's so i'm just i'm so excited She was, she was like there, you know, you know how like a, a series has like its main crew and then like the Zuko comes in for like the last two seasons to like join the yeah. crew. Like that was my original hope for Ventress is like maybe she's going to like be their buddy or something for like the last two seasons. And so it's nice to see her at least get this kind of return. Do yeah. you think her and, her and Anakin are, are definitely two sides of the same coin? Hmm. Do you think her and Finnick are going to be friends? Or are they going to be doing some oh. bounty hunting? Because oh they're both those girls. They're, they're both girlies. And like, I just, ooh, I just love that idea of like mm-hmm. Fennec and Ventress teaming up to do like badass things together. Like Just be like I, bounty hunting BFFs. Yes, exactly. They're like a little duo and stuff. Like, I love mm-hmm. that idea so, so much. And like, I, I oh man, like any more... Fennec is just amazing for me. I was so excited to see her in the trailer. And I would also, earlier today, I mentioned how badly I wanted Ventress to be at Galaxy's Edge. Like, I just, you know, get her there for a couple months. I will get myself there somehow, and I will meet her. And to to see yeah. her maybe walking around with Fennec would, like, and them just, like, hanging out together, it would just make me so happy. Like, Yeah, I, I already told like Katrina, I'll cash in all my miles. Yeah, I'll cash in all my miles for that. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I feel like I feel like you and Arzu need to do like a nice like casual park day in Batu with your like cosplay like Asajj and Fennec backpacks, and then like to do like a little photo shoot with you two. Oh yeah, with your bounty hunter babes. 
<laughs> that would be so cute. And it wouldn't, okay, it wouldn't be the first time that Ventress was in the parks. She, uh, she was part of Star Wars Weekends when Clone Wars was airing. She and sure she, like, was. She, she was. sure was. Yep. And I also Big believe head. she she was um one of the races. The races, she was one of those characters that you could stop and like take a photo with. The dark oh, side. Yeah. I never I never met her during Star Wars weekends, but like, oh God, I miss Star Wars weekends. I miss seeing Zam Wessel just like walking around, just chill, like damn. I need to see Dark Vader bust a move again. Like honestly. <laughs> oh god, the hyperspace the hyperspace hoopla owns my heart. Like I will never forget the moment I saw Darth Vader like dancing to Locked Out of Heaven and Padme was dancing to I Knew You Were Trouble. And I was like, <gasps> Oh, I love that so much. Oh, my so fun fact about me, my um my cousin is a Disney cast member and happens to be Greedo's friend from the hyperspace hoopla. So oh, my wow. cousin oh, my keenly God. knows about Greedo's dance moves. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. Greedo, yeah. I'm not gonna lie, Greedo always creeped me out. I went to the sci-fi dine-in breakfast oh. one year and like Greta got a little, a little too like friendly. I was like, I, I'm good. Thank you. Oh my gosh, dude. I hope, I really hope we get like some more like Star Wars weekendy things at the parks now that like it seems like they're trying to go in a new direction. I really, I don't know if we're ever going to get Star Wars weekends again, but I would love to have Star Wars night like Disneyland has it because mm, I think that yeah, that is such an incredible yeah. event. Mm -hmm. And I like I want to go again so badly because it it just was so fun and there, I mean there, again there's just something about me Disneyland. pouting about it I know Sabine I and Ezra like, were there it helps like I haven't been able to get my tickets yet because I lost my job and like so the first thing I'm gonna <laughs> that do that doesn't help me Katrina <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna try and do when I get a job is hopefully score some tickets for Star Wars or for Star Wars nights because I would so love to go like. I just, I haven't looked at the tickets, so I don't know if they're sold out. So, you know, I'm just trying not to break my own heart. <laughs> there, There's nothing that, like, broke my heart more than the fact that, like, there is the Padme, or sorry, the Queen Amidala, like, photo op. And then Anakin was her guard at Star Ooh. Wars night. Like, are you kidding me? I loved Thanks. that. Like, I loved it, but it was also my only gripe. And this is because I'm, like, that guy sometimes. Um, the Padme or the Queen Amidala that was there was like in Sabe's outfit disguise. And like, yeah, it could belong to Queen Amidala, but like I would have liked a different okay, we like a we know Padme never repeats an outfit. That's true. Right. Like, okay. So it could be, yeah, it could be Sabe. So I don't know. We'll I, see. I I understand why they did it so that she was recognizable. Um, but I would have preferred her Avenger the Sith outfit. Oh, I like I want She's just walking around regular... pregnant. Hey. Yeah. Be <laughs> like, look, you also you get a photo also... with Luke and Leia too. <laughs> look, would you not also want to show off the belly from Hayden Christensen? Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need a bingo card when I have Brit or Arzu in a conversation. <laughs> like I know exactly. <laughs> mm-hmm. What's going to come up? I, I have my two main talking points tattooed on my body. I don't know how to get away from it. <laughs> but but I want regular Padme, like, outfits and her just, like, walking around so badly. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, like, she's, like, I mean, Queen Amidala is an incredible chapter of her character arc. But, like, I want Padme. I just want Padme. And it would be, okay, and this is me helping Disney marketing right here. Um, I hope they remember it when I go for them for a job with them. But here, here's my thing. If you have Padme in different outfits throughout the different Star Wars nights, people will want to come back and get the different They'll outfits. They'll go to every single Star Wars night. Exactly. Yeah. There are people who will want to collect every single shot of every single outfit so that they can put it up on their site and put it in their family albums. I'm just saying, if we had Padme like costume change like once a night, and there were different costumes every single day because she's got enough. Like, selling point, selling point. 
Oh, I would just thought. So my one of my Christmas gifts this year was the Hot Toys um, Attack of the Clones pad bay. So and this is like my first <laughs> Hot Toys, and it's coming soon. I'm hoping when I go back to Florida in a couple weeks, she's gonna be there, and I'm just gonna oh. sob when I see her. But if Asajj is coming back in a big way, I feel like they have to do like a big Asajj like Hot Toys, and like yes. her, she's like would be so incredible in like that i don't know if they've done that yet have they but there was okay, wait. such a cool yeah she's had sideshow releases i went to the reason i was looking up screen was because i was looking at my my sideshow ventress doll and i because i thought she was a hot toys but she's a sideshow um so i think it would be great to do another another ventress like sideshow release with her new outfit and the and the uh the hot toys dolls yeah, like I just think that her, um, like her, at least her, uh, like her original costume would be so mm -hmm. cool in one of like the the full dolls or the full yeah. like statues. Mm -hmm. Cause it's so removable skirt. And if she like blows up as a character with this generation, there's just like so much opportunity because she has so many different outfits, like considerably more than most side characters in the Clone Wars do. Like she, she has her original. She's got her night sister outfit, her first bounty hunter outfit, and now she's got like this one as well. So yeah, I love her bounty hunter outfit. She looks Me so cute. cute. I so love. I I just like that it was so her. You know, it's yeah. It's I her. okay. Fashion icon. What I want, but I don't think we'll ever get it, is uh, if they ever decided to take that dark disciple book and what what whatever outfit she was wearing for that dance or ball or masquerade oh. or whatever it is in that book yes. and give mm -hmm. us an actual like representation of that i think that would be incredible because we do not have enough like women in star wars who just get to be frilly and girly and like mm -hmm. oh my god beautiful. and that outfit was like full mommy mode like she had a whole corset like she had skirts that she could hide blasters under freaking stiletto yeah. heel like the that oh my god I, I i i noticed that like her character model here of course it's got some changes and upgrades to the animation but like they still have her character model and they built that dress on a character model and so you know if ventures plays as large as a part of a part as i would like her to play in this season I would love to see that character model like in action because like that dress, oh my God, like that's my dream cosplay is to just be fancy gala Ventress. Yeah, Jeez, I just, uh, that's barely. I'm still mm -hmm. mad that like Disney hasn't realized literally how much money they can make if they made like any of Padme's outfits. Like, mm -hmm. do you, like, do they know what I would do to have like, or a lake dress or mm -hmm. meadow padme sitting on my shelf in a 300 hundred dollar figure yep yeah i i just i hope that uh that we see more merchandising around like all the women in star wars because it's like i <laughs> if anything was proven by 2023 it is that women and non-men go out and they spend money when there are things made about them and so I think not only is making more Star Wars dolls a great way to show women like, hey, like you're here too. Like you can come into this fandom and it's going to be great and we make nice things for you. But it also just kind of like, it's a good way to make money. <laughs> we spend money yeah. on the things we like, man. Like we have our own jobs now. It is very different from 19. We have our own bank account. Our we can have credit account. cards now. Did you guys know that? We can we can blow our credit cards on Star Wars merch now. Like that's it's 2024. Like merchandise to women spirit. and and non men like more often because like we will spend the money. Like we'll do it. Yeah. Did you see that incredible book that they're releasing from the Barbie World tour of like Margot all of Margot's yes. Robbie's different outfits from all of oh, the events? I'm absolutely like gonna that, get it. I would. I know, Perfect and like they work. have like. I, uh, I like the fashion photography aspect of it at me being like someone who like considers them a, some, a photographer who specializes in fashion. I'm just like mm -hmm. literally drooling at the mouth. 
-hmm. Like I want, like I would love to put it together a project where I just like took photographs of different like Padme cosplayers and all of these incredible outfits in like a very like high fashion type setting or like literally like female, any type of female like character from Star Wars or, you know, like female identifying or anything like that like in a high fashion setting like that would be a dream project for me celebration in tokyo that would be so amazing yes and like Mm -hmm. that's why dressing the galaxy was such a like holy grail thing for me that i spent way too much money to get a copy of it for myself and then was so disappointed when i bought a new copy and it came damaged uh but uh anyway like i i uh I want to do photography like that. Like, get me on a Star Wars set, please. Exactly, exactly. Brit is an incredible photographer, y'all. I've seen Brit take photos of not just Star Wars cosplayers, but like Star Wars actors. So, you know, go check her out, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we're, uh, like- we're coming up on the hour right now. So if anyone has any more points you'd like to, to have uh, aired, then please do air your Pointuses. Okay, I am so excited about season three. (laughs) But I was already so hyped for season three of Bad Batch. I really fell in love with the series in the second um, series season because I feel like we really got to know the characters and just you know, I like fell in love with the the group as a group really. And I mean, I always loved Omega, but loved all her brothers now too. And mm-hmm. just like the Sage Ventress is like a, the giant cherry on this oh, Sunday. And absolutely. Rex is going to be back. I'm so excited about Rex and just mm-hmm. Wolf. And it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt so much because we're going to find out while well, Rex only had Wolf and Gregor with him at mm-hmm. the end. Yep. And I feel like it going to hurt bad. Yeah, I'm. Oh man, oh, like, gotta prepare like, for that. I got my lolf cat. <laughs> I'm really, I'm excited to see how this rescue is going to be pulled off, and if again, if we see crosshair, it gets pulled off. If, if it gets pulled off, and if we see crosshair finally make the decision he knows he wants to make, and that's to go back home to his brothers. You know, like we. I, I, you can tell even in that singular shot, like there, there are times when like, I'm not sure if someone's going to get redeemed because they keep making bad decisions. And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe they too. won't, maybe they'll just stay evil. Eh. Um, but then, it, but that shot, that like sign of like, I don't want to say it's remorse. I want to say that like crosshair knows he's dead inside. Like, like oh yeah, he's given he, up. He's given yeah, up. Yeah, he's given up. He's destroyed. He's defeated, and he needs to find a way out of it because he can't just keep. I feel like he's at a point where he just doesn't have the en- energy to keep doing awful, horrible things and think that's powering him. You know, like so. So we'll see. Like who knows? I'm already in mourning from the last um, season. Uh, I don't. I. I am not excited to see. I mean, I'm excited to see it, but, like, I'm also, like, not ready for the pain of, like, Fee reacting to tech stuff. Um, if we she get that at all. She was piloting. She was taking yeah. over his spot, and she was still helping yep. his brothers. Mm-hmm. And I, was like, I know. I was <laughs> so sad. Oh, and she I loves them pretty she hard. She loves Omega, too, so she's probably, like, doing everything she can to get Omega back also. I know. I love her, and I'm excited. I'm so glad that she was one of, the, like, the first character seen in the trailer because I my hopes are, are yeah, that she's sure. gonna play, yeah that she's gonna play a much bigger part so I think text a lot yeah yeah I think they're gonna winter soldier him <gasps> oh my god oh no like he literally fell from a train oh, at the, like the oh, evil people's blue. headquarters Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, Bucky. It's a Bucky story, legitimately. Oh, like, like my he heart. gonna come back. Like, how did Hemlock have his glasses? How did yeah. he have his goggles? I mean, like, come on. Like, oh my god. I'm shaking oh. the love cat tail at you. My it's gonna heart. hurt. Jesus. Gonna hurt. This net, yeah, this next season's gonna hurt. 
So I hope that whatever happens with Ventress is like super cool and badass because I need I need some salve on top of all the pain that I'm going to experience. Because honestly, like I was like, okay, so like season two is like Empire. So season three is going to be Return of the Jedi. No, it's going to be Revenge of the Sith. It's going to be Revenge <laughs> of the Sith and the ending's going to hurt us all. Mm-hmm. I'm not, so that's I'm not, my, I'm not ready. I'm sorry. I'm putting that out in the universe. No, actually all the clones, like they went like as far as they can in the universe, like they got some purgles and they just like, they're chilling out at a beach. Yeah. Everybody retired to the ammo. <laughs> yes. Please. Party every oh. day. Oh my God. Tropical oh. drinks, everybody. Yes. On that note, um, you know, with the Party bad batches hiring their space Margaritaville, uh, we will go ahead and, and close up the episode. <laughs> Thank you. As long oh, as sorry. it's not like space, like what is the the old people town called, Bert, in Florida? Oh God, the villages. Yeah, as long oh. as it's not space, the villages, we're good. Right. Mm-hmm. We're like, <laughs> don't uh, look that uh, up. Save yourselves. Space Clearwater Beach. I think. I think that's that's. that's no, that's where they're. I, okay, again, I haven't been to Clearwater in like thirty years, so <laughs> so maybe it's bad now. Okay, I'll tell about it off the air because I don't want your like twitch stream to get be like yes (laughs) all right folks we're gonna wrap it up for the night uh thanks for watching in the cantina with oh katrina the show that i just made up today uh my guests (laughs) have been incredible uh let's go ahead and find out where we can find you online start with candace you can find me on twitter slash x or whatever he's calling it now at candace is a geek and you can find me everywhere else pretty much candace call and subscribe to our youtube the geeky waffle and Britt. Hi. So um, I am at Britt Barnum on literally almost everything. And I also have a film blog called That Film Girl Brit. So I would love to see you there as well. Yay. Thanks everyone for tuning in. I've been Okatrina. You could find me anywhere. If you look for Okatrina on the internet, listen to my podcast that I co-host called Padro Pascal, the podcast about Pedro Pascal. Uh, and soon to return is What's Club on the Geeky Waffle Network, uh, my little podcast about weird little guys in Star Wars. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in. And until the next time I decide to do this show, may the force be with you. And don't forget to flush the toilet. Bye.